Welcome back to the channel after a long time. As the exams are nearing, I thought of putting some cheat sheets that is the important points chapter wise. Firstly, without any delay, we'll start with Trace Evidence Part 1. And at that, we'll be discussing about hair. Hair, what is it? It is a protein filament that arises from the follicles under the dermis. And the main thing is the medullary index. This is the diameter of the medulla to that of the hair shaft length. That these both ratio is called medullary index. And this is considered to be the major thing to differentiate human and animals. In human it is less than one third and in animals it is more than one third. This is important they have asked many times. Just remember them. Then coming to a protein called keratin that contains a sulfur. This sulfur uh, actually is interlinked to form these stable fibrils. And in hair we have a pigment named melanin which is uh, the thing that imparts color to the hair. And these things has some cells called melanocytes. And there are two kinds of melanin that is eumelanin, fumelanin. Eumelanin uh, tells, uh, gives the dark or brown uh, to black color. Whereas fumelanin it's like from yellow to red. So this is fumelanin, this is eumelanin. Even this they have asked them recently in the previous question they asked about fumelanin. Next let us go on to The thing, see, uh, suppose if the hair is cut, the cut hair doesn't contain any follicle. Actually, in follicle, we have the nucleus and from there we get the DNA. But if the hair is cut, we won't get any nuclear DNA profile. So keep this in mind, even this they have asked. But we can get a little amount of mitochondrial DNA because this DNA is present in the shaft of the hair. Now, the cross-section of human beard is, gives you a triangular shape and the actual lifespan of hair is three to seven years so if you see if you take the individual of a particular individual's hair now and then you compare it with that of the hair uh, the same individual after seven years it's of no use you get really a brand new hair so that's why after seven years you will have a new hair a spaces that are located in the cortex are called as cortical fasci and this is the reason that gives the bouncy nature to the hair and this is mostly present in the root part than in the shaft and this is the reason that gives us the shape and form to the hair next we'll go to the cross section of the hair even with this cross section we can differentiate the races like whether it is Caucasian, Negroid, Mongoloids. So if it is Caucasian, you have an oval cross section. See, this is Caucasian. Okay, this is oval. Now, Negroids have flat cross section. This is for Negroid. Mongoloids have round cross section. Okay, this is Mongoloids. Next is the hair growth. Oh, in that, under uh, that, we have firstly the anagen phase where the hair starts growing. That is the growing phase usually is for two to six years. Then the catagen phase is the transition phase where the uh, the hair should slowly starts coming out of the follicle. This is usually for two to three weeks. Whereas telogen phase is the resting phase. This is where the hair naturally sheds, falls out. And for a day, approximately 50 to 150 hairs are shed out. Okay. Just remember this one. Next is the human hair that grows for 1 centimeter. For a month, it goes for 1 centimeter. It's approximately 0.4 millimeter. And you can see the buckling of hair that is only observed in one type of hair. That is pubic hair. See, uh, this is the buckling, that is kinky hair, you can say, where there is a degree of variations in the shaft, that is, and this is only observed in pubic hair. This is a uh, curly hair. The root of the human hair is called club-shaped, because whereas in animal hair, it is not the case, it is different. In human, it is club-shaped. Nextly, we'll be discussing uh, about the cuticles. 
so to know cuticles are nothing but the scale patterns of the hair and these scale patterns how can we observe by using the nail polish that is you put some kind of nail polish or softened vinyl in a slide and upon that put a strand of hair and after that after the drying you just remove you can find the scales and uh, you should find it under the compound microscope the differences are that firstly you have different types of cuticle things but ma major things I have put here coronal cuticle that is like a crown like scale so you can see here this is usually found in rodents and bats okay whereas spinous cuticle elk, they are found in the cat seals wing they are like petal like scales imbricate cuticle this cuticle under that it has different categories but in human uh, it is of flattened type even imbricate cuticle is found in other animals too but in human it is an imbricate type see this is how it looks so nextly major difference how can you identify is from the medullary arrangements so the dog and cat has a donut shaped medulla and there it is cobblestone effect like uh, it is it resembles cobblestone so how that is how we differentiate the medulla in rabbit it is a multi serial ladder that is yeah, so many number of clumps are formed like medullary clumps are there whereas the cross section of the hair of rabbit's hair give you dog bone shape whereas for cow the medulla is a very little or it is totally absent so even there are uh, species like cow where the medulla is totally absent even in human some part of the hair may be absent or it is usually discontinuous to tell hair collection this is like as a control we have to take some control when we compare it with that of the that in the crime scene so to compare to have a standard we need approximately 50 uh, full length strands of the scalp if it is scalp hair we need 50 strands of full length hair if it is pubic hair it is 24 full length strand for the good comparison okay so this is about the hair next we'll go to fibers yeah so under that uh, this the first artificial fiber that has come was the rayon in the year 1911 this is by the chemical production of cellulose we get this rayon whereas nylon is after rayon by coal air and water we get nylon this is in the year 1939 so when you compare the nylon fiber it is stronger than that of the steel wire and the most prevalent fiber from plant we do also get from plant so that is cotton yeah next uh, the synthesized fibers that up that possess have the physical property of a double refraction and this is observed as a crystalline shape in when you observe it under the polarizing microscope so example of a mineral fiber see you have different kinds of fiber i don't want to mention you might have no the basic thing that is the artificial fiber plant fiber animal fiber and this is mineral fiber so you know that so i'm just putting out the major points like this is cheat sheet right so the example of mineral fiber is asbestos sheet best example the mercerized cotton uh, what is meant by mercerized cotton is uh, like the cotton is made to treat with caustic soda which gives us good luster like good shine and good strength to the cotton because cotton fibers uh, dissolve quickly so for that to give it strength they are mercerized and they are twisted shape under microscope because if it is mercerized cotton to differentiate this from the other artificial fibers this has the twisted shape cellulose is a kind of fiber that we use is composed of the wool and cotton the flotation test usually that is like it is used for fiber it is like in the water for example you put the nylon fiber or olefin fiber if it is nylon this starts sinking whereas if it is olefin it floats so depending upon its flotation we have can differentiate the fibers 
Next, we have these things. So they may sometimes uh, they have asked to the uh, actual scientific name of the plants that we use as the fibers. Like uh, under stem, that is, it means that the plants where we use this plant stem for the fiber. Like flax, flax. You know, we might have heard of flaxseed. The flax plant is called linum. Usitatissimum. This from this we get linen fiber that we'll see. And jute is Corcoris capsularis. Ramai is Bumeria nivea. Hemp is Cannabis sativa. So these four plants we get fibers from its stem. They will ask, they have asked you like if you take flax from which part of the plant do we get the fiber? It is stem. Whereas leaf it is sisal. That is agave sisilana. Abaca, it is Musa textilis. Okay, just remember these scientific names. Cotton, it is genus Gossipium. Capoc, Celiba pentandra. Coir, Coco nucifera. So these things we get fiber from its seed. Okay, so even these things, uh, like they have asked in the form of match the following in one of the previous questions. So you have to remember them. And for your understanding, I have kept these things. See, this is the fiber for cotton. So you can see the twist that are present under microscope. This is the colored part. And for hemp, this is how it looks. And nylon, it's so plain. This nylon uh, or any polymer that you uh, have a cross section, you get a triangular shape under stem. This is linen. So where did you get this linen fiber from? Flax plant, that is linum usitatissimum. Then the rayon, this is rayon. This is wool. Yeah, you can see them. See, you, if you, this is wool is from, from the agora, the sheep. So you can see, because it is the hair of the, the sheep, animal hair, you can find the medulla under the microscope. Okay. Yeah. So this is all about the part one. I'll just shortly put like uh, within a day, I'll put the other video too. So this is for your uh, quick understanding and what all you can read for TGC net that is going to be in the next week, a few days. So all the very best. You still have time. Prepare with hope.